Okay guys, I'm going to show you how to create a lines plan using a 3D model in Rhino. Uh, you can see I have my model imported here. The back of the, the aft end of the vessel at the keel is located at the origin. Uh, it's not a big deal if yours isn't. Uh, it's just, just makes things a little simpler to get started. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of lines plans that I'll be trying to model. Uh, the first, the first here, looking like this, uh, you see a profile view, uh, what we call plan view, and a body plan view. Next is one like this, and this is the layout I'll be going for. Uh, body plan on top, the uh, profile view in the middle, and the plan view at the bottom. Another one here. Uh, here you can see the uh, grid lines along the bottom and the uh, and the top indicating distances and another one uh, uh, again with the, with grid lines uh, dimensions going along the uh, going along the lines plan so to begin I'm going to uh, I'm going to work with the right viewport so I'm going to double click on the word right there and it'll maximize that view and double click will minimize again so while you're in this view, holding the right mouse button on the on your uh, mouse will allow you to move and uh, move around this viewport. Scrolling up will zoom in, scrolling down will zoom out. So uh, before I get started, I want to add a new layer. So if you click on this tab, uh, you can edit your add and edit your layers. I'll click on new layer, and I'll name this one body plan, and I'll click. <clears throat> click the check mark here to make sure this is the active layer so anything I create now will be uh, under that layer and next I'm gonna make sure I have my project tool on so if you can't find this it should be under OSNAP so you should be able to click OSNAP and have this box appear and you want to make sure project is on so it's dark gray and while we're at it I'm just gonna go ahead and check the rest of the uh, check boxes here next to OSNAP that'll that'll just make sure that uh, when you draw lines and that sort of thing that you can snap exactly to this uh, spot you want it to be it'll make more sense as we go along so my first command uh, I'm going to type plane and as you can see as I type the the word appears up here in a little drop down menu so you can either click plane click enter or right click on your mouse I prefer to right click so the first part of this command will ask you to create a corner of your plane. Uh, I just want this plane to cover the entirety of the vessel in this view. So what I mean by that is I'll click the first corner here somewhere, nowhere in particular, the second one down here. Now I can see I have a plane. And seeing as I have project on, this means that this plane I drew should be uh, laying on the Z wide plane. So if I go into perspective, you can see exactly what I mean there. Plane is uh, the plane I drew is exactly on the YZ plane, so it's at x equals zero along the uh, x-axis. All right, I'm going to go back into my right view. Oh, sorry, I'll be going into my uh, perspective view. Actually, I want to uh, create an array. So what I'm going to do is type array, hit enter, and it asks you to select the objects you would like to array. I will click on my body plan. I mean my body plan plane, and hit enter. Now it asks for the number of planes you would like to array in the x direction. Seeing as I want my plane to be distributed along the length of my vessel, uh, we'll say at 1 meter intervals, and the length of my vessel is 25 meters, I'm going to type 26 here to be sure that uh, I include a plane at the beginning and the end of my vessel at the bow and stern. Hit enter. I don't want any in the y, y or z direction, so I'll type 1 for both of those. And my X spacing, I'll type one, meaning one meter, and hit enter. So then it will give me a preview of how my array will look. And if I zoom in here, I can see that the last plane I created is right at the tip of the bow, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, going into different views, you can see a little more clear, clearly what you've done. So I'll go ahead and, and press enter again to accept that. So uh, the preview view goes away, and now I have these 
26 planes. Now the purpose of doing that was to uh, be able to create intersections of each plane with the hull. So what I'm going to do is type, type intersect. If you type intersect, it'll ask you to select the objects you'd like to intersect. I'm going to go ahead and draw a box around everything and hit enter. So when you do that, you can see that it created a, well, a highlighted series of curves. So these curves have been created, they're new, and if you go into the right view, oops, uh, you can see how these curves will come into play for a lines plan. So in this view, we're just looking at it from bow to stern. So uh, we, we, we see all of these lines as if they're two dimensional, all on one plane, but they're not perspective view will show you that they're uh, spread out along the z-axis. But that's okay for now. All we needed were the lines. You can also see that this point was created. That's because the very tip of the bow was intersecting with this last plane. So perhaps this last plane wasn't that necessary. We're just going to be deleting this point. So I guess now we want to move these curves out of the way so we can go ahead and make new curves. Uh, so if you've accidentally unselected everything, so if you clicked outside like this, and you can't see your curves, a way of getting them back would be to try to select each one individually. Uh, if you click somewhere where there are more than one object, uh, then it'll give you a pop-up menu to select, try to pick what it is you're trying to pick. So you can either do that, do it one by one, or what you can do is type this function called selection filter. So. Uh, I already had it open, so it closed it by accident. But uh, you might get something to pop up like this. So if you get this popped up, uh, I like to keep it mounted here, just docked in the, above my tools. So what you want to do is uncheck surfaces and poly surfaces because these planes are surf. Oops, I can't click them right now. But these planes are surfaces, and my hull is a poly surface because it's complex geometry. And what I'm going to do is go back into my right view, for example. I'm going to select everything. And you can see that it only selected my curves and that one single point. So now I'm going to type move and click anywhere, nowhere in particular. And I'm going to hold shift to make sure this is being uh, moved perfectly orthogonal and move it outside. You can also do this by using your ortho command, which will make all movements uh, orthogonal. So in my perspective view I can see what I just did. I took my lines and moved them outside. And while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and delete that point. We won't be needing that. So now I'm going to delete all of these planes I just created because I won't be needing those anymore. Going back into my right view I can just draw a little box at the top. I'm making sure I check surfaces and poly surfaces again. Draw a little box, select all of these planes, hit delete. Right. Next I'll go into the top view. And working with my hull again, I'll create another new layer. And I'll call this one plan and make it my current layer. Like checking here. I'm gonna do I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna type plane and draw a plane surrounding my hull. Uh, now I'm going to go back into the right view again, uh, perspective view, sorry. I'm going to array, type array. You can either select, select what you want to be arrayed before or after you type it. All right, and I can see that I want these to go vertically along the z-axis uh, because I want to make cuts at uh, various heights along my vessel. So. When it asks for the number in the x direction up top here, I'm going to go ahead and type 1. The y direction, 1 again. And the z direction, uh, I know that the depth of my vessel is 4 meters, so maybe it would be good, uh, a good idea to have one, uh, one plane at every half a meter. I'll just type 8. And then I'll put in my spacing at 0 0.5. So I'll go into my right view here to get an idea. Yeah. I can see that I'm missing a plane at the top. It would be a good idea to have one at the very top here. So I can go ahead and edit this before I hit enter to accept. Uh, I can click Z number 
and I'm going to type 9 instead of 8 and hit enter and then I get my additional plane at the top so this is uh, uh, this looks to be better so I'll hit enter again to accept that all right so you can see I have planes intersecting with my hull I'm going to do the same as what I did before I'm going to select everything here and type intersect again you can select everything you want to be intersected before or after you type it and hit enter and I'm left with these curves going into the top view you can see you can see the curves that you just created and how they'll uh, come into use for your plan view I'm gonna move these out of the way by typing move hitting enter and just dragging them out of the way holding shift to make sure everything is orthogonal hit enter and while I'm here I can select these planes and delete them because I won't be needing those anymore all right so now I have two sets of curves which is a good start but I still have one more to go uh, to make my to make my profile lines I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and call it profile hit enter and uh, make that your active layer and, and now I'm going to hide my plan view and body plan view. So the reason I'm doing that is because I'm, I'm going to be creating planes <clears throat> that will run along the ZX plane uh, to intersect with my vessel. And I don't want to be interfering with my curves I already, I've already created. Going into my front view, I'm going to need to be here to create those planes. And as you can see, if I were to draw a plane here, for example, then... Uh, I could very easily inter uh, interfere with the curves I've, cre I've created behind the vessel. So I'm going to type plane, select here is my first corner, here is my second. Perspective view will show you that I've created a plane exactly along the uh, center line of the vessel. <clears throat> and that's okay because the plan view, uh, sorry, and the lines plan uh, profile view, I'm only going to be needing the curves from one side of my vessel, either port or starboard, doesn't matter which I start with. So uh, this is actually this is actually ideal and will save us work later. It just so happened that my plane ran along the x-axis because of the way, uh, because of the location the hull was imported to. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing I've already done twice. I'm going to select this plane and I will type array. <coughs> Uh, when doing arrays, it's best to have your per, uh, perspective view active because uh, when it asks for your number of x direction, y direction, and z direction, depending on the view you have open, it will it will uh, it will read those differently. So your x direction, what you think might be you might be entering as your x direction, might be your z direction, and so on. But I find if your perspective view is open, then uh, you should be free of any of those errors. So I want these to be arrayed going along here, going along the beam of my vessel, which is along the y direction. So when it asks for a number in x direction, I can type 1 again. Or you can see that 1 is already default because I used that last time. So I'll hit enter. <coughs> uh, the y direction, well, the beam of my vessel is 6 meters. Uh, so that means if I, wanna, if I want to create an array going from here to here, so instead of creating three, an array of three, I'll create an array of seven. Uh, the reason being because six is double three, and I want to add one to that to make sure I get an additional plane at the very end of my vessel. So I'll type seven, and for Z direction, I'll type one. So the spacing, again, is going to be a half a meter. And I'll hit enter. Coming into a different view, you can see how that, uh, how that worked out fine. So just to be more clear on why I typed 7 here for my y direction rather than 6, you can see that there are 6 planes created, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, though when, you, when you're when you creating an array, it already includes the one you have selected at the beginning. So I typed 7 and a spacing of 0.5, so that will, uh, that created six additional planes at the spacing of half a meter along the beam of my vessel. This looks to be okay, so I'll hit enter or right click. So now I'll uh, select everything and type intersect and create my profile lines. 
Again, I can select these planes I've created now and delete them. And uh, I'm going to want to move these curves out of the way. So I'm just going to, instead of using the selection filter method, I'm going to select everything right now and hold control to unselect the hull. Deselect the hull, sorry. Alright, so I've deselected the hull. I'll type move. Maybe go into a right view. And I'm going to, I'm going to turn on my plan and body plan layers to make sure I know where they are. And I'm going to go ahead and move these lines out of the way. <clears throat> okay, so at this stage, I've created all lines I need for my lines plan. So I won't be needing the hull anymore. So I can, I can go ahead and turn off my design layer and uh, hide my 3D hull. And now I can uh, start creating my lines plan. So as you can see, all of these lines are in 3D. I don't want that for a lines plan. I want everything to be flat in two dimensions uh, all along one plane. So there's a way to do that in Rhino. I'm going to start by uh, doing it with my body plan lines. I'm going to go into my right view because that's uh, this is the orientation I would like to view them in 2D. Uh, that, that means if my screen were a sheet of paper right now and I seen this, on my sheet of paper, then that's exactly what I would expect from a lines plan. As you can see from the example I had up earlier, uh, the body plan sort of looks like this, which is very similar to what uh, to what we have here. Okay, so I'm going to change my layer to the body plan layer. I'm going to make that my active layer, and in the right view, I'm going to type plane, ensuring that project is still on. That'll be necessary here. All right, so I'll begin to uh, make these two-dimensional. First, I'm going to have to draw a plane that I'll want them to be projected onto. So I'll type plane and just draw a plane around my body plan lines. As you can see, it lays along the y-axis here, the green line, coordinate axis. So now I'll type project. And uh, this function will take curves and project them onto a surface you have drawn. So first it asks you to select the curves and points to project. So I think this is easy, most easily done in the right axis, in the right view, sorry. So I'll select these curves I've created. I'll hit enter and I'll select my surface I've created and hit enter again. And it says projecting, so that means it should be done. Uh, coming back into my perspective view, uh, you should see that uh, your lines have been projected onto this plane. So at this stage, you actually don't need these 3D curves anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and in the top view and select those, and I'll hit delete. So now in the perspective view, you can see we're left with this one flat surface with my uh, body plan curves on it, projected onto it. So if I go into my front view, they should just be a straight line, because there's nothing in the Z, X plane. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with my other two sets of curves. Uh, looks like my profile, my profile lines will be most easily done in the top view. So being in the top view, I'll type plane. Oh, I'm going to have to first, uh, my mistake there, I'm going to have to first change my layer to the plan, uh, plan view layer. Uh, typing plane, I will draw a plane surrounding my plan view lines. And now we're going to do the same as we did before. So I'm going to type project. Uh, note that this project function is different from this uh, project function. So this one controls object snapping to make sure everything snaps to the plane. Uh, and this project function projects curves onto a plane you create. So after typing project, it says select the curves. I will select these curves. And I'll hit enter. And then I'll select this plane I would like to project them onto and hit enter. And now my curve should be projected in 2D, which they are. All right, so this is good. Now I can delete these 3D curves that lay above the plane. Uh, this will probably be best done uh, in the right view. Yeah. So I can go ahead and select these and delete them. So now I have two surfaces with two sets of curves. Uh, my 
my profile lines are the last ones I need to deal with right now. So uh, if I go into the front view, I'm thinking, yep, this is the view that will uh, be most easily done. And I make the profile view my active, the profile layer my active layer. If I'm going to draw a plane surrounding these lines, uh, there's a good chance I might be interfering with my plan view lines or my body plan view. So I'm going to go ahead and hide those layers while I do this operation. Now I'll type plane once again, draw a plane surrounding everything. The, the size of this plane doesn't really matter as long as you're surrounding all curves because this plane will be deleted after anyway. We're just using it as a tool to make all of our lines 2D. So I drew my plane. I will now type project. I'll select all my curves and hit enter. I'll select my surface and hit enter. And now my curve should be projected onto my surface. Looks like we're in good, in, uh, in good shape. So now I will select my 3D curves and delete those as they're no longer needed. Turning back on my other two layers, you can see that now I have all three uh, sets of curves projected onto a plane and we can get started. So if we pretend the top view is a sheet of paper and I'm looking at my plan view, uh, this is the correct orientation for, for this, uh, this set of curves here, the plan view lines. Though uh, my body plan and my profile lines are going to have to be rotated so that we can see them clearly in this view. So I guess, uh, I guess I can get started with that. Using my right view, I'm going to go ahead and select these lines. And just in case you're confused, I'm selecting, I'm selecting my profile lines. So selecting my profile lines and the plane that they're on, I'll go into my right view and I'll type rotate. That's rotate. So it'll then ask for my center of rotation. Uh, doesn't really matter uh, where you select that to be. I'm just going to snap to the end of my plane. I'll hold shift to make sure everything's orthogonal. And I'll, I'll uh, rotate it down 90 degrees, holding shift again. Right, so we can see these lines are now below the y-axis. We'll fix that later. But the main thing is, in our, in our top view, these are both now visible. Alright, so now I need to transform my uh, body plan lines. So if I go into my top view, maybe this will be a good spot to rotate. I'll type rotate, select my center of rotation. Uh, your center of rotation does not have to be uh, at the object you're trying to rotate. For example, I can select here as my center of rotation and uh, rotate at 90 degrees. As long as you select the curves you want to rotate, uh, they'll rotate about whatever center of rotation you assign to it. Now, this is uncomfortably close to my plan lines. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hide my plan view for now. Uh, maybe this is not the case for you, but uh, I'm just going to hide mine. And maybe if I go into my right view, yeah, that should do it. I'll type rotate again. And now I'll rotate these lines 90 degrees down flat. So going into my, and knowing that my plan view lines are here somewhere, I just have them hidden. I'm going to move these out of the way, up here somewhere. All right, I can turn my plan view back on now. And if I go into my top view, I can see everything is aligned properly. Although my right view will show me that that's not quite the case because I need to have these all on the same plane, especially if you're creating a 2D drawing and a 3D drawing program. All right, so I'll select those and I'll move, I'll move those up. So I'll select the end here and I'll just hover over the end of those curves to create an inference point. And then if I hover uh, directly perpendicular above it in line with my inference point from my other curves, it should snap right to the axis there. Do the same thing here, select those curves, type move, select the end, click on the end, hover over my inference line up perpendicular. So now these are all along the same axis and in my top view uh, nothing has changed because I've just moved them in and out of the screen. Alright so now everything's in plane. Going back to my top view I'm gonna hold shift to select multiple things. <clears throat> I'm gonna select those planes and delete them. So 
because I won't be needing those anymore. Now I'm just left with the lines that I need for my lines plan, but there is still a little work to be done here. Uh, as you can tell, this is not exactly what a body plan looks like. Typically, your right side would uh, show the details of the bow of your vessel, and the left side would show the detail of the aft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm going to make my body plan the active layer because I'm working with that right now. Type line. I'm going to create a line that divides these lines right down the center. So with that, I'm going to type trim, and it'll ask to select cutting objects. I will select my line as a cutting object. Hit enter. And knowing that I've created 25 curves, uh, <clears throat> I guess I'm going to have to have 12 on one side and 13 on the other. It would be best to have 13 curves on the right side because my the bow of my vessel would need a little more definition than my stern because all of those lines are fairly close together anyway. So what I'm going to do is count 13 lines from, uh, from here towards the outboard and delete those. So it says select object, objects to trim. I'll start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And in the same way, I can do the same on the other side. So I'll select the twelve most aft curves. So I'll start from the outside. Seems like we have two curves here. That's fine, I'll just delete them both. I don't want one in that place. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, and I'll hit enter. And now I'll delete that line I created in the center. So now this looks a little more realistic. The right side describes the barrier vessel and the left side describes the aft. Now seeing as my lines plan will only describe my vessel up to the water line, uh, you're gonna see this like straight line along here. Uh, typically it wouldn't look like that in a lines plan. If your hull model described your vessel in its entirety, but mine only shows me uh, below the water line, which is okay, because that's all we need right now. Okay, so we're going to do the same sort of thing here for our plan view lines. Uh, we only need these top ones to describe uh, to describe the water lines of the vessel. So I'm going to do this, a similar thing here. I'm going to type line. Uh, it's best, even though I'm not creating any new parts and this won't entirely be necessary, I like to work with my plan view layer if I'm dealing with my plan view lines. So I'm going to create a line that divides all of these lines along. Uh, along the middle here. And I'm going to do the same as I did before. I'm going to type trim, select my line as my cutting object, and trim these lines. I can either do them one at a time or select them all at once and hit enter. I'll delete my line as I won't be needing that anymore. So it seems like my lines are all created appropriately now. So I can uh, start formulating what goes into a lines plan drawing. So I just want to move everything a little closer together because this will all have to fit on one sheet of paper. So seeing as I moved everything orthogonally every time I did an operation before, both of these uh, sets of curves, uh, my plan profile view and on the y-axis, though my body plan lines, I, weren't, I wasn't moving those in any particular direction. Uh, so they're kind of out of uh, out of where they should be. But if I want to line this up at midships, uh, I think the best way of doing that would be, oops, not a lie, create a line. If I type line and run it from the length of my vessel, this line, I'll now type divide. And ask for the number of segments. I just want this to be split in half. So two segments, I'll type two and hit enter and it'll create points along this line. So one here, here, and here. So you can see that there's a segment here and a segment here, two segments. So the reason I did that is because I want to be able to line my body plan lines up with the middle, middle of the ship at midships. So I'll type line again, use this point, and create a straight line up, holding shift. And now I'll select my body plan lines. I'll type move, and 
it doesn't really matter which point I get as long as it's a point along the center of, of these lines uh, along the midships. I'll use that one and bring it perpendicular over. Uh, it doesn't have to be perpendicular actually, it's just the height of uh, between these curves wherever you want that to be. So now I can delete that line as well as all of these lines and points I just created. To select multiple objects by the way you can just hold shift, so I can click here, oops, hold shift, and select everything I want to be deleted. Hit delete. All right, so everything seems to be in line now, and I can go ahead and start creating uh, a grid. So I'll type new, hit new layer, and I'll type, type grid, and make that my active layer. I'm gonna bring this one at the bottom. Uh, yeah, so I made a new layer called grid. I'm gonna make this a different color just to and just a light gray for now, just to differentiate from uh, all the lines I've already created. I'll go ahead and start with my profile lines, and I'll type line. So to create my grid, it's really up to you how you do this. I'm just going to show you how I would. Uh, so I would use this endpoint as an inference line, and creating my vertical lines first, I just come up here some arbitrary distance, click, and then shoot down below uh, any arbitrary distance below my keel. So now I can tell that this line is uh, surely below my keel and above uh, the top of my vessel here. And now I want to have one of these, we'll say every meter running along the length of my vessel. So I can use an array for that. Um, the x direction, seeing as the length of my vessel is 25 meters, I'll need to type 26 in order to get one grid line at the beginning and the end. Uh, type 1 for my Y and 1 for my Z directions. My spacing is going to be 1 meter, but pay attention here because you may have, uh, you may be in the same scenario as me, and you'll have to type negative 1 meter because the positive x axis runs to the right. So if you type negative 1, hit enter, you should get it to work out just fine. And I'll hit enter again to accept that. All right, so those are my vertical lines. I'm gonna type line again to start creating my horizontal lines to my grid. Uh, I'll do the same sort of thing. I'll just hover over that end point there at my bow, come out here and create a perpendicular line to my vertical lines. And now I'll create an array going downwards. So I'll type array. X direction will be one this time. And my Y direction, the depth of my vessel is four meters. So I'll type nine to make sure I get one at a half a meter, at each half a meter. So I'll type nine and hit and type one for Z. My spacing is gonna be negative 0 0.5 because my positive Y direction is upwards. I'll hit enter and that looks to be fine. The lengths of these grid lines past where they need to be is arbitrary right now, but that's fine, we'll uh, fix that later. All right, so I'm gonna start creating grid lines for my plan view lines. So I'll hover over the tip of my bow, come down a bit, and shoot up past it, make sure I'm covering everything. Again, I'll type array. Uh, the x direction, as we learned from uh, these lines, will have to be 26. I'll type one for y, one for z, and a negative one for spacing. Uh, your spacing is really up to you. Uh, if I if I adjust my spacing to be negative a half, for example, I would just have a bunch of finer lines, which is okay, except then I would have to double my X number to be to one. But, and this is also fine, it's just I don't, uh, I don't think this is necessary for, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary to have this fine of a grid for a vessel of 25 meters. So I'm gonna change my X direction again to 26 and my spacing to negative one, one meter. Hit enter. All right, so I'm going to type line again, do my horizontal lines. I'm going to hover over this point, come out of it, hold shift, and bring it over here. I'll quickly array this upwards, one and X. Uh, the beam of my vessel is six meters, so from here to here will be three meters. So it's best to have uh, one at every half a meter, same as uh, this sort of a spacing. Uh, so if I want to have one at every half a meter, that'll, that'll be six meters, uh, sorry, seven until the uh, outboard of my vessel. Type seven, type one for Z, 
and then 0 0.5 for my spacing because we're now going in the positive y direction. That looks fine. All right, I'm just gonna quickly do the same up here. I'll type line. I've created a line going along my midships and now I'm going to array them, array it, sorry, by typing array and I'll want it to go in the x direction. I'm gonna to have to do two arrays here because I'm gonna want lines going this way as well as lines going this way. So uh, I guess I'll do my right side first. Uh, x direction, my beam is six meters, so that means from here to here is three meters. Uh, I think it'll be okay to just have an array of four here, having a spacing of one meter. Type one for y and one for z. So if I type one here from a spacing, you can see that uh, uh, that it just overshoots my my beam my vessel. So what that tells me is that I didn't quite capture the entire beam my vessel uh, using the 13, 13 lines in the front. Uh, I'm guessing if I create a array over here, it should line up with almost exactly here. Maybe not quite, but it's, it's okay. So this is acceptable. I'll hit enter. Uh, so I'm gonna have to create another array. I'll type array and the same, I'll use the same number for the x direction, which is four. Type one for y and one for z. And now my spacing is gonna be the same, except in the negative direction. So I'll type negative one. Yeah, and that looks to be fine. I'll hit enter on that. So you can see that this line pretty much lines up with the uh, extents of my beam. Okay, so now I'll create my vertical lines. I'll type line, uh, use a, a top of one of these curves as my inference line, I'll come over here, I'll click and drag, holding shift, and now I'm gonna to wanna to array that in the negative y direction. I'll type one for x. Uh, the depth of my vessel is four meters. If I wanna have one line every half a meter, I'll have to type nine, uh, one for z, and negative 0 0.5 for my spacing. That looks okay. Again, the spacing and the number of lines you have is totally up to you. I just prefer to have it look like this, uh, a little more spacious horizontally uh, and a little more defined going vertically. All right, so now we have our grids created. Uh, I'm gonna, as I said, these lines kind of on the outside, they're, they're just arbitrary distances. They don't look really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit that right now. You can follow what I'm doing here. I'm gonna type rectangle, click on this corner and now I can either assign an arbitrary distance which I think looks nice or I can enter one myself so it says our corner or length you can do is a type a length so I'm going to type 0 0.25 meters hit enter so you can see that the uh, one that one dimension is already assigned for us and now I'll type 0 0.25 again and it will create the square which is a 0.25 squared square so I'll type copy select the top corner of this. So all I did was type copy and selected my square. I'm gonna bring it down to my other corner of my grid, which I wanna be trimmed and I'll click enter. So now all I've done so far is created these two squares. Why did I do that? So I'm gonna create a third one. I'll type rectangle again, select my top corner and my bottom corner down here. So the, as you can see, the only reason I've created this square and this square are for my or to create guides for my bigger rectangle. And the reason I did that is because I now want to trim, so I'll type trim. I'll select this large rectangle I've created as my cutting object, just that large one. I'll hit enter and select the objects to trim. I want to trim these lines. So I can select them all at once. And now I'll hit enter and I'll delete my rectangles I've created. All right, so now I have neat grid lines. Uh, I'm gonna do the exact same thing down here. So now I have a nice clean grid design. So from here, I guess we can start making this a drawing. So what I'm going to do is click on this plus tab down here and click new layout. 
and I'm going to name it Lines Plan. Uh, I want it to be Landscape. Uh, this seems to be the just a typical sheet of paper dimensions. And initial detail count, you're just going to you're just going to want to leave that at one. That means we'll just be using one viewport for our drawing, and click OK. All right, so it then creates this drawing for us. So I'm going to, if you want, you can adjust what you want to see in your viewport. I'm going to want to make this a little smaller so I can fit like a title block down here and some text along the edge of this grid. So I'm just going to double click inside my border here. And now I can adjust my viewport view. So I'm going to view it, uh, zoom out a little bit, maybe put it like right here. I kind of want to have this centered. You could go into detail, but how you get this perfectly centered with your border, but for now, this is fine. All right, so I'm going to place it about right here. And now to get out of this viewport and go back into your uh, drawing view. Uh, yeah, it looks better. Uh, you can just click anywhere along the border, double click. Right, so now zooming won't affect your viewport. Also, you might notice that you can't select anything here. That's because all of these lines are actually created in the drawing. So if you go into the top view, you can still select them. But in your lines plan drawing layout, then you can't select anything like that. Only entities you create in your lines plan layout can you select. All right, so while working this new layout, I'm gonna create a new layer. Click new layer, uh, I'll call it lines plan. And I'll check that. Uh, the color doesn't really matter because we're not going to be interfering with anything because we can't select it. Okay, so to view the scale of your layout, you're going to want to go to Tools and Options. And then if you expand the units uh, drop down and click on Layout, you can see your layout units are in millimeters by default. They should be. It's, uh, it's, it'll depend on how your uh, program is set up. But if you view your model units, mine are in meters uh, as default because my vessel was imported in meters and my layout is in millimeters. So it's important to understand that. It's, uh, it's up to you to change it if you want. I'm going to leave it as meters and just be aware of the fact that everything is one one thousandth of what it is in the viewport layout. And I'll hit OK. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and get started by assigning some dimensions to my grid. You'll see that I have the drafting tab open. Uh, if you go ahead and click Create Text, uh, we'll start down here on this set of grid lines and click on the end. A little box will pop up, create a type of text you want. Uh, I'm going to type baseline and then type zero millimeters. I want to have everything in millimeters uh, defining, my, defining the dimensions of my vessel. Uh, I'm old school, so I'm going to choose Courier New. And I'm just going to leave the, I, I know this is going to be a large text, but I just want to show you how it, uh, how it transfers here. So the text height is automatically set at 100 millimeters. You can, you can change it later. So I'll click OK. And now you can see that this text is huge. It's big, but understand that 1,000 millimeters, uh, sorry, that 100 millimeters in your layout space is actually 100 meters in your viewport space. So if you just double click on, uh, if you click on this, sorry, go to properties and text, you can edit your text, you can change your height. We can try one millimeter and then you can see, oh yeah, that's actually a good size. So I'll leave it at one millimeter. And you can also change some uh, other uh, properties here, like a line to the middle and keep it at the left, center, right, what odds. I'm gonna keep a uh, line to the left because I started based on this uh, edge of the grid here. Now, I don't exactly want this to be at my grid lines, so I'm going to move it. I'm going to type move and move it over, we'll say, 2 millimeters. So if we type 2, hit enter, hold shift to make sure I move it perfectly straight along. So yeah, that looks fine. So now we have to do this for every, every point along this curve. But uh, to make matters easier, I'm going to use array. Oops, I'm going to type array. I'm going to select on my text and hit enter. Now, uh, it'll ask you to assign, uh, define how many you want in each direction again. We're going to be going in the y direction here, so one for x. And seeing as I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines, I'll type nine for y direction and one for z direction because we don't want any coming out of the page. 
Now my spacing, I can do as I did before. I can assign a spacing and I know what my spacing is. I'm pretty sure it's a half a meter going up here. So, or you can just uh, do it based on uh, points you select. So I'm gonna start my array right here next to it. As you can see, as I move, uh, it'll increase the distance between each one. Now, if I wanna have them exactly at each point along the grid, I can just select my next grid point and everything is placed exactly where it should be because they're all evenly spaced and I'll hit enter. Now, all I gotta do is change uh, the text on each one of these. So uh, these go up at a half a meter, so 500 millimeters, thousand. All right, so now I have uh, up to 4,000 millimeters. Uh, so now that I've created the first one, I can just copy that over to the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and type copy. And I'm going to copy it from this point. Now this won't uh, this won't put it exactly where I want it, but I can do some transformations. All right, so now I'll select all of these, uh, all of the text I just created, and what I'm going to do is first align it to the right, so that kind of jumps everything to the left side of the, my last grid point here, grid line. I'm going to type move. And uh, I'm just going to hover over my text here to see if I can get a good inference line. So I'm going to make inference at the top and bottom of, of my text box. And then I'm going to select the point that's in between them. So what, the reason I did that was so I can drag it right to the end of the line. And then I can type move again, click anywhere, and move it out two millimeters as I did on the other side. Holding shift. So I typed move, typed two, and then moved it to the left. Two, two millimeters. So now I have uh, now I have dimensions on both the left and right side. All right. So now we have to do the same thing going along the bottom. So instead of copying this text, uh, I'm just going to create a new one and click on the click on the end point. It doesn't really matter where I click just yet. And seeing as this is the back of our vessel here, I'm going to type aft perpendicular. So aft, all in caps, aft per, uh, aft per, I'm just gonna abbreviate it and type zero millimeters, because it's zero millimeters from the stern. And I'm not gonna adjust any of this just yet, and I'll hit enter. Uh, I forgot to change my text height. Click on that, uh, this might open for you automatically. If you can't find this edit text at tab, then maybe just uh, click on this button up here, edit text. I'm going to change my height to the same one millimeter. I'm thinking because I started my text at this line, it should be easier to center it and then maybe uh, align it at the top so that it comes right below my line. Okay, um, and now I'll uh, just move it down two millimeters. I like to keep it all consistent. So I typed move and I typed two, and I'm going to hold shift to make sure it moves exactly down. I like to keep my spacing of the text from the grid consistent uh, throughout everything in my drawings. So I can tell that this is fairly long, so maybe it'd be best if I uh, edit this text, hit, hit enter. Yeah, that'll look a little better. So now when I put my dimensions, they won't be overlapping. So if I copy this, actually, sorry, I'll array this, type array, and my x direction, I'm going to need 26 of those one for the Y, one for the Z. I'm going to select this endpoint and that endpoint, and now I've uh, created my array correctly. So it's now spaced at whatever this distance is in layout space, in layout scaling. I'll hit enter. You can see all my text is overlapped, but it's not a big deal because I'm going to have to change it anyway. So my first one will be five, uh, sorry, not 500, it's going to be a thousand because my, like I just said, my grid spacing is one meter. Next will be 2000. 3,000, and so on. Okay, so I've created all my dimensions along the bottom. Now, similar to what I just did, I'm just going to go ahead and copy those. Uh, type copy. And I'm going to copy them to the top of my grid. And just to make life a little easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my text boxes here and inference the bottom middle 
I'm going to copy them up here based on that point and enter and now I can see everything's at the top of a grid line so now all I need to do is move them up two millimeters so I'll select them all type move click anywhere type two and hold shift to make sure they're, they're moving vertically and you can see everything's two, uh, two millimeters off now. Now my F perpendicular should be adjusted here. I'm going to type a line, I click on a line bottom and that should fix it. Though I'm not entirely pleased with that either. No, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I'll line it at the middle. So that, that looks to be uh, appropriate. All right, so now we have our dimension. Now we have our dimensions uh, fully placed for our profile view. Uh, there are some details missing that I'll insert later. Uh, those would be the design waterline and that forward perpendicular. I'm going to show you how to do that uh, after I get the rest of my grid lines complete. So, seeing as the length of my vessel is the same uh, for my plan view and profile view, I can go ahead and copy all those dimensions. Type copy. Click on the top of one of your grid lines, doesn't really matter, and move it up to the uh, top of a grid line up here. So now those have been transferred perfectly. I'm going to do the same with my bottom dimensions. Select them all, type copy. Uh, I'll select the bottom of this grid line and the bottom of that grid line. So now they're done. So that's great. I can't do the same with these because these describe the height of my, well, the depth of my vessel. And uh, in this view, we're looking down from the top on the vessel, so uh, this is actually the beam. So I'm going to have to create new grid lines here. Uh, what I can do is uh, is select the first seven here, so up to three meters, and I can copy those. That'll work fine. So I'll select the edge of that grid and the edge of this one, and uh, so these dimensions are okay. Except this is not the baseline. Now it's important to know that this is the center line CL. That's typically done for your center line. And now I can do the same over here. Select up to 3,000, type copy, select one of your grid, grid lines, and move it up here, and change that to CL zero, mil, zero millimeters. All right, so that's a good start. Uh, fortunately, everything we've created uh, in terms of dimensions down here will transfer to our body plan. Uh, seems our body plan, this is the keel, and this is the uh, water line of our vessel. Uh, it's the depth. This, these lines, these dimensions, sorry, also describe the depth. depth. So I'll copy those, selecting this grid point, for example, and transfer them up here. So they transfer perfectly. And yes, this is the baseline. I'll do the same for the left side. Copy those. And now to describe the beam of our vessel, uh, we're going to need new ones, but these actually, it, w w the, the dimensions I'll be putting along here are these, except uh, these run vertically. I'm going to have to make them run horizontally. So seeing as this spacing is one meter and these spacings are one meter, uh, I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm just going to grab seven random dimensions and you'll see why in a moment. I'm gonna copy those, and what I'm gonna do is pick the middle one, select two, uh, well, not select, just inference two endpoints, and select the point between them. So now I have the middle of the top of that text box. I'm gonna move them up there. Now, these dimensions don't make any sense yet. I can change them. I'm gonna select them all first and move, type move, two millimeters down. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is uh, change the text in those text boxes. So here we have the center line of the vessel, so we can just type center line, CL. And as we move outwards, uh, it's the grid spacing is one meter, so I can type 1,000. All right. And now, now what you can do is copy. And again, I'm just going to select the uh, uh, inference, the bottom left corners of the center line box, text box, and copy it up here. I'm going to select all, oops, all of these texts. Type move, click anywhere, type two, and move it up. 
So now I have my dimensions up here fully. It's best to put a midship symbol uh, here, so I'll uh, I'll have to grab one after and put it in. Okay, so I've just imported this midship symbol I found. Uh, so typically on a lines plan, this will go placed above the body plan view, so somewhere like right here. So I'm going to do that with mine. Uh, I'm going to move that uh, at the center, perhaps that circle, and inference that grid line so it goes directly above the center. Okay, so I'll leave that there. Some additional details you should include in a lines plan are the design water line. Uh, like I said, the perpendicular aft and forward perpendicular markings and uh, yeah, that sort of thing. So what I'm gonna do is go back into my top view and uh, as you can see here, you can't see any of the text because that was all created in the, line, in the lines plan layout. So that's only visible from here. Uh, be careful of what you change in your top view now because all the texts are still in line with these grid lines. So if I go moving anything, it'll throw everything out of place. Uh, what I do want to do is uh, identify where my design waterline is. And I think my design waterline at a max surf was 1.8 meters from the keel. So what I can do is come over to my layers. Uh, perhaps I'll go back into my grid layer. I'll type line. And I'm just going to create a line from the bottom of my grid, which is my keel. And I'm going to type 1.8 meters. Hold shift to make sure that line is up. So now I have a line that 1.8 meters high from my So now what I'm going to do is type line again. And I'm going to use the top of that line as my inference point and keep it in line with the rest of my grid lines and start it there. And what I'm going to do is run it, hold, if I hold shift, it should come straight across. I'm going to use this as my inference point and end it right here. So I have a line which describes my design water line of my vessel uh, running amongst my grid lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the properties of this line. So I go to properties and I'm going to change my display color. Uh, instead of by layer, I'm going to make it red. So that'll make it show up uh, nice and bright. I can now delete that line I created earlier. So this is my design water line. And where this water line uh, intersects with the bow of the vessel, that's my forward perpendicular. So I can create another line, starting with this uh, intersection as my inference point, if I can get it there. Now I have a forward perpendicular line and a design water line. And it's best to have an, uh, the same sort of line for your aft perpendicular as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to type line and uh, create a line at my aft perpendicular, which overlaps my grid line, but that's okay. So I'll select one of those curves. Uh, so this one's part of my grid, which is right. I'll change my display display color to red again. But that's okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this text and I'm going to move it according to the bottom center there up to the end of that line. And then I'm going to move it up again two millimeters as I do with every other uh, dimension. So my aft perpendicular is at zero millimeters. Same sort of thing down here. Looks better. And now I'm going to insert uh, some more text. I'm, what I'm actually going to do is copy this aft perpendicular. I'll copy that and I'll move it over here. And I'll change the text to say forward FWD, meaning forward perpendicular. And I'm going to have to measure that dimension in order to uh, assign one here. All right, so I can now make that same text at the bottom of my uh, drawing. I can type copy at my aft perpendicular text and place it there and type the same thing. So forward perp and 22,250 millimeters. And now I'm just noticing that my white grid line is overlapping my red one. Uh, I think the red one is more important here for the detail view. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete my white grid line. So it's like that. 
Uh, another important detail here is to add text at the end of this line. Uh, so I'm just going to copy any text from its grid line space and place it here. And now I'm going to change this to design waterline. And that is at 1800 millimeters. Okay, so that's everything for one view, uh, for one set of lines in the lines plan. Uh, next is just the same, we're repeating a lot of the same operations for this view and that view. Okay, so to include uh, some details into our plan view, I'm just going to copy what I did for the profile view uh, for the forward and aft perpendiculars. Uh, you can see this overlaps text. It's not a big deal because later I'm going to be making these lines all dashed anyway. Okay, so that looks like all the details I need for my plan view. And now my body plan view. Uh, I guess all I need is my design waterline uh, because you can't really indicate where aft and forward perpendiculars are here. So now I have a design waterline. All right, so that looks like all the details we need for our actual lines plan. I guess now <clears throat> the only information we need to include would be a, a title block on the bottom and uh, titles. All right, so I'll just make sure my lines plan layer is checked because I'm going to be creating new objects now. And what I'm going to do is uh, type, go to my drafting tab again and click on text. And nowhere in particular for now, I'm going to create text here and call it profile view. Oops. Profile view. And I want to have that centered on both, uh, with both regards. Click OK. Uh, didn't change my text height. So I'll go to properties and text and change that. Knowing that these are one millimeter, maybe I don't want my title text to be bigger. I'll type two millimeters. That looks to be OK. And uh, now I'm going to try to get this centered above this uh, above this grid. So seeing as this is 2,500 millimeters, the half point would be right here. So I'm going to type move and uh, snap to the center of my title uh, t text block and try to select a midpoint here at 12,500. And uh, now I can move it perfectly above the center of my, uh, of my lines. So what I'm going to do now is just copy that text. So I'll select it. I'll type copy. And I can copy it from anywhere, say the top of the 1600 grid line, and move it up here. Hit enter. So now I can just change the text of this to be uh, plan view. And seeing as it's centered, uh, it should be able, it should be uh, exactly in the middle line here again. One more time, uh, I guess what I'm going to do is copy this one. And what I'm going to do now is. Uh, copy it up to the middle here and I can see that my midship symbol is here and maybe it'd be best to align this midship symbol between uh, the text and this text. So now I have a midship symbol exactly between the plan view title and center line block. So this looks pretty good. So I'm going to create a title block down here. For my layer I'm just going to create a new one and call it title block. Oops. and make that my active layer. I'm going to type rectangle and make it, we'll say, 30 millimeters in the x direction and maybe 20 millimeters in the y direction. This is the area you'll use to put important information about your drawing, just title and these sort of things. So what you can do is I'm going to create a polyline that starts at the top. I'll come down knowing I'll come down half of it, so I'll come down 10 millimeters, and then across to the end. So here's uh, here's a typical title block. It's not very big, but it's good enough for uh, anything you might need to do, uh, might need to include. So I'm going to create new text. I can type text or click on the text uh, button up here. I'm going to create it at this endpoint, and I'm going to want this text to be really small because I just want it to be the, uh, I just want it to be to describe what's going to go in each block. So I'll say produced by, and we'll see how one millimeter looks. Hit OK, 
Okay, so that's going to be too large. So I'm going to click on Edit Text. And I'm going to make the height of that a half a millimeter. Yeah, that looks okay. So a half a millimeter, I'll align it to the left and make it uh, to the top. So it's kind of in the very top corner here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it off the edge. So now it kind of rests in the top corner there. And what I can do is actually go ahead and copy that. So next, we're going to fill in our title block by creating text again. Uh, I'm just going to click anywhere in this square. So produced by, I'm just going to put student name and number. So your, your name and your student number. I'll center that later. And now we'll just to go ahead and populate the rest of these boxes by placing everything right in the middle. So course number. As uh, NG3001. If you want to know how to center this, uh, the best way I find to do it is create a line and run it from corner to corner. And then you can just click and hold, and it'll automatically snap to your center of your text box. And you can select your midpoint and then delete your line. So now this is exactly in the center of this block. Not too picky right now, so that'll do. So yeah, there's your title block. Uh, uh, a final step would be to go to your grid layer and change your line type. Should be here under line type. If you don't see that, just right click on grid, set properties, and line type. I'm gonna change it to dashed. Now you may not see it as dashed from afar, but if you zoom in, you can see it's dashed. And uh, when you go to your print preview, depending on the scale of your uh, line type you might be able to see it here so I change this landscape you can see that the dashes are pretty big I don't want that uh, so you can change this by going to tools options uh, annotation and line types if you click on dashed you can see your pattern so I want my pattern to be if this is in millimeters on paper I want mine to be we'll say a half a millimeter We'll, we'll try that see how it looks so half a millimeter by half a millimeter so that means every dash is a half a millimeter click OK so now it's gotten really small in this view so you can hardly see it but that's okay uh, because if you go to your print preview uh, it might be it might be more suitable now if you just imagine a half a millimeter uh, dashes on a piece of paper seems to be uh, uh, appropriate. So I'm just going to print this as a PDF just to get a sample. You're going to want to click Vector Output and Landscape. Uh, the print color should be appropriate because, uh, I mean the display color should be appropriate because we have some red lines here included. And click Print to PDF. You guys will be printing to uh, your own printer. And I'll call this lines plan. So if I look at my lines plan I just printed, uh, I can see my I can see my grid spacing is appropriate. That looks fine. <clears throat> and everything turned out okay by the looks of it. Uh, this is, at this stage, you should be uh, scanning your drawing for, for possible mistakes. Yeah. The only thing I can see missing would be uh, an, a border to my drawing, uh, but I can add that. Uh, in a few ways. I, I'm thinking the quickest way of doing that would be to uh, just go back in and type rectangle and just surround everything. So now it should be fine. All 
All right, guys, so here's the end product of my lines plan from start to finish. Uh, you can see I have my design water line, uh, forward perpendicular, aft perpendicular, uh, design water line details included, as well as the title block down here. And uh, this should be it. Uh, this is how you would create a very basic lines plan. Uh, everything looks very presentable, and that's the main thing. Uh, some engineering firms may include more detail though this is certainly a good starting uh, starting place.